hello everyone welcome to yet another video in today's video we are going to discuss about the interview questions that were asked in coforge let us thank our subscriber who has shared us this questions and his experience so that it can help others who are preparing for interview so let us get started without wasting much time if you're new to my channel don't forget to like share subscribe so here are the questions that you see on the screen. The first question was, you know, what type of data sources are used in your project? So here we can talk about the data source that we are using. So it's a pretty, pretty straightforward question. Uh, and um, I think uh, you can talk about if it is a snowflake, you can talk about that. If it is redshift, whatever the source is there, you can talk about that. Next is given two columns with names and marks show all the rank functions work and name it so so this is more about how and what are the different types of ranks that we have in tableau so for that what i've done is i have created uh or i've taken a file with two names with two fields employee name and salary and i just want to show you how this rank work okay so i'm just naming it as rank and rank of what is a field it is and I want it in descending order. Okay, I'm going to click on apply. Okay, and I'm going to drag and drop here. Now, let us see how each rank will work or each type of rank will work here. Okay, so what you need to observe is, observe we have similar ranks here. Marvel, Spider-Man has the same rank or else let me sort it first yeah now see here after captain thor and hulk have same salary four thousand and then we have vanda spider-man and marvel with the same salary observe how ranks are generated for this that is what is needed or that is what we need to understand i'm just duplicating it for different rank types here so that we can use it okay so first thing let us edit here instead of rank i'm using rank dense here and I'll name it as, so you can follow the similar approach. You can create a file in real time and whenever he is asking you to do, and you can just simply explain him how the ranks are generated. The most important thing is how ranks are generated when you have a similar rank is what we need to talk or what we need to tell in the interview. Okay, so I'm just showing you for a reference here. apply okay along with this you can also add index okay that is also you know a, a part of this maybe it is not a rank function but we need to know the working and the difference between rank and unique here because this type of question also they ask many times in the interview or uh, I'm observing that in the 2024, I think uh, in three to four companies, they have asked about this question, which is related to rank function. And the other question that is being frequently asked is about your YTD calculation and YOY calculation. So I'm just writing index. Okay, so if you observe index is simply generating row numbers here, one to nine. Okay, so irrespective of whatever the order is, it will generate the row number for you. Okay, but whereas rank uh, fit with, whereas index uh, rank, normal rank function is if you observe one and two we have, and then it is skipping three because four repeated, 4,000 repeated twice. So next rank that you got was four after one, two, and two again. So we don't have three, then we have four. And then two is repeated thrice right here, 2000. So five we got after fourth, fifth rank, it gave three times, five, five, five. So technically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it gave the next number as eight. So 
even though it is printing the same rank thrice it is counting you know uh, in its memory that you know it has repeated three times and next rank is eight okay next is rank dense if you observe here what is happening it is not skipping the rank here so one two two it repeated twice but it didn't skip the next rank so here if you observe it is four but here it is three only okay likewise if you see after three four is uh, here we got five and then we got eight here we got four three times but then again it gave the next rank fifth it didn't skip the number so that is rank dense so rank modified means if you observe one two two it repeated twice right so then it skipped the latest uh, number and then it gave four so here it gave two after one two right so here it will give one three because two is repeated twice right or we have salary twice so one this is your second rank. This is your third rank. So it is taking the maximum rank. Likewise, here after four, you know you will see two thousand is repeated thrice. So this will be your fifth rank, the sixth rank, and seventh rank. So because maximum repeating is seven, so that number you are getting here. Okay. So like that. So rank again, rank unique is it will generate a unique rank. For all the ranks so this is about your rank function you can talk this is a very good question that can be asked and you know you can also pretty much explain so here he has asked a different column to take you can take this this fields or you can take in like i have shown both should work now uh, you know write ytd and yoy calculations i think uh, you know i've told you in my previous fear uh, in previous video, YTD is year till date calculation and YOY is year over year growth. So for this, what we need for YTD calculation, you need to find out your sales till current date in current year. Simple, which means uh, you can simply write calculation like this. Year of uh, maybe order date. Okay, I'll take, uh, not here, I'll cancel it. Maybe I want to connect to sample superstore here and then create. Year of order date is equal to year of today. So this will set your date to current year only, simple. Okay, then what we need, then we need all the sales that are less than today. So you simply read tonight and order date is less than today, simple. So you'll get the entire data till today in the current year. So using this calculation, you can create your YTD calculation. Now on top of this, you can write an if statement. If this condition is matching, then then give me sales and it's simple. This is your YTD calculation. Like this, you can calculate for MTD, week over, week till date, whatever you want, you can, you know, calculate. So base thing you need to find out, this is current year and all the days till today, which means, you know, till April 4th, we need to get everything. If it is in current month, again, you need to uh, write a calculation here, like say, and month of order date is equal to month of today. So you are setting it to current year and current month and all the days which are less than today. So there's, that will become your MTD calculation. Okay, so like that you can write this calculation. Next is, you know, your YOY calculation. YOY and, you know, uh, year over year growth means first you need to find out sales for your current year. So in this, current year sales again same thing like you know if year year of order date is equal to your year of today so which means i am considering my maximum year as my current year so this is your current year sales now we need to go back one year previous right so again year of order date is equal to year of today minus one. So what am I doing here is from my current year, I am going back to one year previous. So from 24, this will give us 2023. 
then again we need to bring out sales from here this is your you know previous year sales then we need to write a calculation current year minus previous year by previous year into 100 that is your yoy calculation okay i hope you have learned this so wherever you want you can use the similar logic so again it can be you are you know yoy week over week month over month whatever it is concept is the same current year versus previous year current month versus previous month current week versus previous week same thing you need to find out okay so that's about your ytd calculation again there was another uh, question that was given you know write a calculation for sales less than 1000 should be low you know 5000 and, and so technically speaking he want the sales to be categorized into multiple parts here like uh, low medium and high okay so here i'm just uh, clicking on okay i'm taking my maybe sub category i'll take and i will drop my sales onto my label now i want to categorize that so let us do it step by step as per the requirement uh, and i'll give it as uh, low and high sales okay if my if sum of sales if sum of sales is less than uh i'm giving 30000 then call it as low sales and i'm ending it for now okay so i am not taking any else part i'll just click on this and i will drop it here now you see only these are being categorized so likewise we need to categorize for all the other things now what i am doing is i am trying to add more values here else if else if uh, my sum of sales is greater than 3000 or 30000 and my sum of sales is less than 1 lakh then i am calling it as medium sales else it is a high sales for me simple i am trying to categorize them into three parts low medium and high like this it click on apply so we got all the values here. okay so like this you can write this statement and you can show it in the interview okay so this is basically to test you test your logical ability if you are able to write logics or not you should be you know in a very good state because in real time this type of logic writing or logical ability to create your own calculations are very very important that is what we need you know when you are working as a developers so next are what are lods and explain it with an example so here in this situation we can talk about different you no know, types of lods that we have okay you can speak about fixed lod include lod exclude lod and you know table scoped and you can take simple one example and you can talk about that i think we have you know covered this in multiple videos and there is also a dedicated video on this i'll paste that video you can watch it it is very 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 important okay so the questions that you are seeing here this second uh, question which is about ranks third question uh, i mean this fourth question about your ytd and yoy calculations and then this fifth and sixth question are all of these questions are very important very means where you can expect this type of work in real time so from real time perspective also these are very important so focus on this type of questions next are what are sets and how many types of sets are there so when he is asking about sets you can tell that you know we have so set is basically a conditional based object right so if at all i want to create a set i'll go here create set and i'll go to top set i need by field so top 10 by sum of sales we need right so so this is one set right so there is a set 
concept that is available in Tableau and then there is another combined set option that is available in Tableau. So you can talk about those in the interview if he is asking you. Okay, so next is what is dual axis and blended axis. Again, dual axis means merging two axes using the concept. I'm taking again a region here, maybe a random dimension and I'm taking sales here. Okay, this is my one measure and the second measure that I have is profit. I'm taking this. Now I have separate axis for each of the measure that I have. Now, when I'm clicking on this and I'm doing a dual access concept, you know, I'm merging my two measures into one common this thing and we have two axes. So this is your dual access concept. So the first thing that you need to remember about dual access is you need to synchronize your axis. Whereas blended axis is little different. So if I just bring it here, you see there is no concept of dual axis here. We are using one standard axis here. That is your blended axis. Okay. So you can talk about that and name the types of file extensions. You can talk about different file extensions that are there. Like say dot TWB Tableau workbook dot TWBX packaged workbook dot TDE. I know your dot uh, TMS, your maps, Tableau bookmarks dot TBM dot uh, TPS, which is about maps. So you can talk about all of that in this. What is ZN function? So when we do suppose here, if you take the example of uh, low, medium and high and here, uh, where did it go? Okay, I am not reading this also part here, which means there is null here so if at all i want to replace that with zeros then i can use zn it might not work here because this is uh called with the integer uh, string here we have string here right that's why so maybe just for here then one now see here we got one one and two two just for reference, I've changed it here. If I remove this, we are getting null because we didn't capture it. Now, if I write Zn, it will replace your nulls with zeros. That's it. That is your Zn function. Okay. How do you improve the performance of your dashboard? Uh, there are five to six steps that we can do. We can, you know, limit the data we can hide or delete the unused unused worksheets uh, remove un unnecessary calculations from your dashboard try to create integer based calculations all of such things we can do in this so that can help you so bins what are bins in tableau and explain with an example so bins are ba basically to categorize your measures into buckets of data like what is the range of data that you need and how are you classifying it like that so mostly like if i go here i want to create a bin on profit i can simply create it so what we need to remember here is bins are always created on measures create bins option you can specify the size of bin you need okay so that is about bins concept next is hierarchy hierarchy is basically uh, the concept of you know going from a summary to or a drill down kind of concept that is available like say if you see here a product is our hierarchy so if i take this category under category i have a subcategory under subcategory i have manufacturer this is your hierarchy so basically this is a relationship between your category to subcategory subcategory to manufacturing and the level of data so here by seeing this we will understand that after category we will get subcategory and under subcategory we have manufacturer it's not like manufacturer is at the top level no so by seeing the data by seeing the correlation between these multiple dimensional fields we need to identify what is at the top most level and what is the bottom most level like that okay so that's it from my side in this video i hope you have learned something new if it does don't forget to like share and subscribe and see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day